Hello and welcome to today's Word and Worship service from St John's Community Church. Whether you have been part of our community for a while, whether you have visited us in the past, or whether you are kind of just checking us out from afar at the moment, we are really glad that you are joining us for this service today. Uh, Our prayer as a group of people who believe in God is that through this service you would discover a little bit more about a Father God in heaven who loves and cares about you deeply and wants you to experience and live with his peace and joy in your life. Now today is Father's Day and if that applies to you, happy Father's Day. I hope you have had a good day so far. Um, Just a personal note from me, from my kids, I know this is pre-recorded, but I want to thank you so much for my cooked breakfast that I had this morning in bed. Absolutely incredible, like just next level. Um, But we thought that it would be a great opportunity today to explore and to talk about our Father God in heaven. Uh, We all have very different experiences of our earthly fathers, but we all share one common father in heaven who is a perfect father. And so today we're going to explore a few characteristics of our father, God. So good afternoon. And can I begin by saying a huge happy Father's Day to all you dads and stepdads and father figures and granddads who are watching this it is great to see you i hope you've had a good day so far one or two little treats maybe maybe uh breakfast in bed maybe the opportunity to watch the football this afternoon something like that but hope you're having a great day and i've been asked just to share a few thoughts about fathers and fathers characteristics and particularly the characteristic of justice which is an interesting one and it's uh given me a lot of food for thought and a lot of things uh, I've had to think about as I've been preparing this little talk. Justice is a funny word isn't it? It's a word that we often associate with the legal system so we talk don't we about the scales of justice and we talk about having a justice system and we even have a ministry of justice in fact I used to work for them so justice is a word that's very often associated with legal stuff. But actually, justice is a word that we come across in the Bible loads and loads and loads. Uh, Particularly in the Old Testament, we come across it and it means all sorts of different things. So we hear talk about justice as fairness, you know, the importance of treating everybody the same and being kind and being generous. We hear about justice as straightness. Uh, So, you know, be straight in your speaking. Uh, that's all about justice let your yes be yes your no be no where you know follow the straight paths of the lord that sort of stuff it talks about justice in the bible in that way it also talks about goodness justice as goodness and particularly goodness towards the vulnerable lots of talk in the in the bible about justice for the widows and the orphans and for the fatherless and so justice is is a really interesting word when uh, associated with being a dad I have to say on on this Father's Day that I just feel so blessed to have had and to have the dad that I've got. My dad is just fantastic and if he's watching this, hi dad, can't wait to see you again. Happy Father's Day. But uh, honestly, my my dad is such a good guy and all those things that I have just spoke about there, that fairness, that straightness, that goodness, that kindness, that generosity, uh, my dad has always displayed in abundance and I'm just so grateful and thankful to God uh, for my dad. Justice is also associated with equality, making sure that everybody is treated the same and this is something we've seen a lot of in recent weeks isn't it? Particularly with the story of George Floyd in America and I'm sure this is a story that has really caused a lot of distress and has upset many, many of us, and I'm sure all of us. Of course, George Floyd was killed, he was murdered by police officers, and there's been lots of talk of justice since. Justice for George himself, justice for the family of George. Just, uh, there's been talk that the, the police officers who committed this crime need to be brought to justice. 
We've seen protesters chanting, no justice, no peace. And justice has been a real key element in all that has been going on in recent weeks. Justice, though, is, is not something that we should just talk about. Justice must also lead to action. It must always lead to action. We must decide what we do to make sure that justice happens. One of my favourite scriptures is Micah chapter 6, verse 8, which talks uh, about doing justly, uh, loving mercy and walking humbly. And it's always important that we just don't talk about justice, but we see uh, uh, justice happen and we do justice. And this is where things get uh, a bit tricky because knowing what to do, doing the right thing when it comes to justice is not always easy. And so even with these recent events, you know, is it the right thing to protest in big numbers about these issues during coronavirus and during the lockdown? Is it right to vandalize and to break the law and tear down statues and other monuments in order to uh, bring about justice you know these are real kind of dilemmas and it may well be right to do those things uh, but only if we are seeking god's justice and not just following the crowd and so justice has been uh, really uh, in the news an awful lot in recent weeks just coming back to my dad uh, of course uh, I think my dad's absolutely amazing, but my dad's not perfect, uh, sadly. Sorry to say that. He's not perfect. He's got one or two flaws, not many. He's a Bolton Wanderers fan for a start, so that's a bit dodgy. Uh, but, you know, he, my dad's not perfect. And indeed, the only perfect human being who has ever lived is Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus was the perfect father. You might think that's a bit of a weird thing to say. You know, Jesus never had any children. How how was Jesus the perfect father? Well, Jesus was the perfect embodiment, uh, representation of God the Father. If you want to know what God looks like, then look at Jesus. If you know want to know what a just father looks like, then look at Jesus. And Jesus was always about justice. Jesus was passionate about justice, particularly for the vulnerable and the poor and the oppressed. He always stood up to the authorities and to people who were uh, not about justice. And this was, you know, uh, uh, this, this was just all that Jesus was about. And so for us, as we try to work out in our day-to-day -day lives, how to seek justice, what to do in certain situations, I guess the best advice I can give any of us is to just do what would Jesus do? You know, what would Jesus do? It sounds a bit of a cliche, but I can't give any better advice than that. When we're seeking justice, when we want justice in the day-to-day -day stuff of life, or even in these big, huge situations like we've uh, been, been, been witnessing and talking about with George Floyd, you know, the best thing we can do is ask the question, what would Jesus do? That's all I, I, I want to say. Can I just finish by once again saying Happy Father's Day? Have a great afternoon and I hope to see you soon. Take care. God bless. So for me, interacting with God as a father has been something of an interesting process. Uh, for me, for a lot of my life, my father has been absent. Sadly, he passed away when I was eight years old. And so when we're talking about the characteristics of God, the one that has become most prominent to me has been his faithfulness and his ever abiding presence. And I think so much we can uh, look at God as father based on the characteristics of our own fathers, whether that's good or bad. You now, my father never meant to leave me, but that was the reality of the situation. And so knowing that God was faithful and ever present and abiding presence in my life, he would never leave me, never forsake me. All these truths that sometimes we, we reel off and say, but never really lands and, and never really takes root. For me, I had to really go on a journey of understanding that to be the truth, of understanding that to be the reality of who God is, that he loves me, that he's for me, that no matter what my experience is of fathers, both biological and spiritual in my life here on earth, that he will never leave me, never forsake me, never let me down, 
never leave me alone. And so I think this is the other side to sometimes when we talk about these characteristics of a father, there's those that we experience straight away and there's those that we go on a journey of, of understanding that our divine father perfects those characteristics. He shows us the perfection of those attributes in his relationship with us. some good news that my wife Janet and I have received just this week and it's something that I feel is pertinent as we come together today to give thanks for our fathers and fatherhood. I'm going to be a great grandfather for the second time later this year. Isn't that just great news? I'm a father, grandfather and great grandfather. I'm truly blessed. And I like the concept of being able to give thanks, especially today, for fathers and for fatherhood. I give thanks for my own father and all that he shared and taught me in our time together. But I also give thanks for my heavenly father, for all that he has done for me in my life so far, and for whatever it is that he's got planned for me in the future. The relationship between father and child is not an easy one. It's often said that there is no parenting handbook, but God our Father gave us the next best thing, His Word. And if we live our lives according to that Word, 
then we will not go wrong. I also want to share with you something I found this last week, and it's a Father's Day blessing from a, a daughter to a father. And it's written by Barbara D. McAdam. I've modified it slightly so it could be from any child to a father, even from us as a Christian child to our Father in heaven. And it goes, You seem so strong and steady as I watch you day to day. But I know you're just a softy, daddy, so what else can I say? You've never been too strong or proud to treat me tenderly, or play a game or watch TV, or be there just for me. I love the way you've made me feel so safe and so secure, even though these times are hard and nothing is for sure. I sometimes can't believe how much you sacrifice for me, so this Father's Day I pray that you will be blessed abundantly. I'm still your little child at heart, who feels so special in your eyes, when you overlook my failures and encourage me to try. I think you are the wealthiest of men to walk this earth because you've given me the greatest gift, a sense of my self-worth. So never waste time wishing for what some would call success. To me, you are a hero, Dad, and I've been truly blessed. talking about the different attributes of the fatherhood of God um, I was reminded recently of a, a message that I listened to um, and I really wanted to share some of the thoughts from this message as I thought it spoke so strongly of the of the father heart of God and the nature of his forgiveness um, so I'm just going to read a passage from Luke 15 um, which is the story of the prodigal son um, starting in verse 13 it says not long after that the younger son had got together all he had and he set off for a distant country and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he'd spent everything there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses he said how many of my father's hired servants have food spare and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Um, And the aspect that, when I was listening to this message, the aspect that was brought out was the forgiveness of the father. Um, Just this incredible forgiveness to close the gap that had been um, created emotionally and physically between the son and the father. Um, sometimes it's mistakes or pride um, things that you've said or done that create that emotional distance between ourselves and God um, and that feeling of shame um, like eating in the pig pen um, and the first thing that the son did was just had to come to his senses and realise that um, that shame will steal your future and that lie that you believe that you're not able to be forgiven and that God can't be close to you um, so he chose, he came to his senses and realised that he needed to get back to his father. Um, and then he left the place that was the pig trough and he went back to sit at his father's table, um, which was a place of restoration and a place of forgiveness. And then we see that he'd had this um, speech prepared for his father about how he wasn't worthy to be his son anymore, that he was just going to be a hired servant. Um, 
and that shame of that unforgiveness that he felt towards himself that he was so um you know not worthy to be called his father's son anymore um, and then that image of the father running towards him not listening to his speech at all he didn't need to have the right words he didn't need to have um you know everything polished and, and rehearsed and he was never going to be taken back as a hired servant by his father that his father had already forgiven him and that forgiveness of god flowed through the father into the son and restored him back to being the son again back to that place where he was given a ring and a seat at the table and a feast was prepared um, and I just want you to know that the, the forgiveness of your father God is enough to restore your relationship with him and that burden of unforgiveness that you can carry and the shame that you can carry um, is not one to be lived with um, and there's a song written by Cody Carnes that um, I'd like to play um, which just describes that running back to the father and believing that his forgiveness is enough for you is enough to remove um, the things that you've done wrong and the gap between the, the gap between us and God.
let us pray. We call you our Father in heaven, and on this day we give thanks and remember fathers and fatherhood. We give you thanks and praise for all fathers, both young and old. We pray especially for young fathers who are newly embracing their vocation. May they find the courage and perseverance to balance work, family and faith in joy and sacrifice. We pray for our own fathers who over the years have supported and challenged us. May they continue to lead us in strong and gentle ways. We remember fathers from around the world, those whose children are lost or suffering. Especially may they know that you are a God of compassion and you walk with them in their sorrow. We pray for our men who are not fathers, but still mentor and guide us with fatherly love and advice. Most importantly, we give thanks and pray for our priests, for those who are our spiritual fathers, who guide us, teach us and lead us in your ways as our Heavenly Father. We give thanks for the fathers, grandfathers and great-grandfathers in our world who have nurtured us with their love, praying especially for those who are no longer with us, but who lives forever in our memory. Amen.